Hi there, this is Sam from Aviatrix Systems, and today I want to show you how to build a transit DMZ architecture using a Aviatrix controller. But before we do that, let's take a look at a diagram that explains our transit VPC architecture. Transit DMZ is comprised of a, a VPC that is otherwise known as a transit VPC. However, it now includes firewalls and it acts as a demilitarized zone because traffic from internet and other unsecured zones can end up in this VPC, be inspected by a firewall and forwarded to the destination. If you look at the diagram, you will see that the firewall is sitting between our, our gateways. The first set of gateways, there are two gateways with distinct roles in this architecture. The first is the main Aviatrix gateway, which connects to the transit network. Second is the companion Aviatrix gateway, which connects to on-premises or other cloud environments. And these two gateways are responsible for properly forwarding packets between the cloud environments and the firewall, and also control things like HA, failover, and or load balancing. In the architecture we have on the screen, there are two sets of firewalls deployed for high availability. In version 4.2, we are going to support active active with multiple with multiple firewalls in the transit DMZ so that we can enable high availability as well as load balancing and a scale out architecture. In the transit VPC, we see that the traffic that comes from the internet or exits to the internet can be inspected by the firewalls as the traffic that traverses between the on-premises environment and our cloud VPCs and or between clouds to cloud. This really simplifies deployment of the firewall in the cloud and it helps security teams ensure the policies are followed when traffic is going from one cloud environment to another. Now let's look at how we would build this DMZ architecture. Alright, so back to Aviatrix controller. The first step is to create a VPC that can host our DMZ environment. We make that easy by providing a tool that creates the VPC and the required subnets in an automated fashion. This is under useful tools and create a VPC. So we want to go ahead and create a VPC, give it a name and its subnet block or CIDR block, and then we'll go ahead and make sure that the Aviatrix Transit VPC is checked. And that will go ahead and create the VPC for us. After we do that, we need to go to the Transit DMZ architecture and set up and see what is required to get started. As you can see, it is instructing us to go to the Transit Network and follow step one and two. This is to deploy a Transit Gateways that will act as our main and companion. So we go to the Transit, set up and then here we're going to launch a transit VPC gateway. What's important here to make sure that we pick the right VPC and then for the first set of the companion and main gateway we want to make sure that we pick the same AZ. So the public management subnet here is the subnet that we use for the management public subnet that our gateways will be deployed to. Let's say if I pick the US East 1A I want to make sure that the main gateway and the companion gateway sit in that the same availability zone. For example, I have a main gateway deployed here. If we were to enable uh, high availability for that gateway, I need to make sure that this one is deployed in the public management subnet 1B. Our VPC creator tool automatically creates a duplicate of every subnet in a different availability zone to ensure ease of enabling HA for customers. Remember, the Transit DMZ architecture can work with Aviatrix Transit Gateway or AWS's Transit Gateway. In this demonstration, we are going to talk about a TGW orchestrator workflow. So, after our gateways are deployed, we go to Plan, and we need to follow Step 5 and 6. Step 5 enables our gateway to be attached to TGW, and a Step 6 actually attaches the gateway and a VPC to the TGW. So for our main gateway, we're going to have to go ahead and click enable. And once that's done, we we'll go ahead and attach that VPC to transit gateway. Once we complete these steps, we'll go back to the transit DMZ 
And here, now it's time for us to prepare the gateway for DMZ function, which we'll do main one, and then we'll do the companion. And then once we do that, we'll go ahead and enable the transit DMZ for that VPC. In this step, as obvious, we need to make sure we pick the main gateway and the companion gateway and then click enable. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and deploy our firewall in that VPC with the subnets that are defined and then pick our firewall to be inserted into the architecture. Our controller would automatically detect that there is a firewall in this particular VPC and it will pick it for you. So you choose the instance for the first availability zone and you ensure that you pick the right interface that faces the north or the main gateway and then you pick the right uh, ENI that faces the companion gateway and then you would go ahead and insert the firewall. At this point your DMZ architecture is ready to go. Thanks for watching and happy deploying.